that, but without further ado, we'll go on to our next speaker, who is Colin Pooley, who is an emeritus pr professor of historical geography in Lancaster Environment Centre and has been involved in Seymour uh, since its inception. He served as a member of the centre's advisory group for many years and across the decades has participated in countless Seymour events where his historical knowledge um, of transport innovation in the late 19th and early 20th centuries has provided an invaluable context to our everyday concerns. Colin and his wife uh, have published in many countless books and articles, I'm sure many of, uh, of us have read that, drawing upon previously unpublished diaries to gain new perspectives on the historical history of transport, the most recent of which Everyday Mobilities in 19th and 20th Century British Diaries, which was published last year. So without further ado, Colin, would you like to take the stage? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, first of all, thanks very much, Lynn, for inviting me to talk. It's great to be back talking to Seymour Group again, uh, something which I feel I've done many times in the past, but it's great to keep on doing it. Um, one of the dangers of sort of coming relatively late on in the morning proceedings is that other speakers have said many of the things you might have said. So um, I endorse basically everything everybody else has said already. I mean, particularly, I think you know, James's sort of analysis of the trajectory of Seymour, I think, was, was really useful. But what I thought I would do is just to say very briefly um, how I feel being involved with the Mobilities Research Centre has changed my approach to research and the things that I've been doing. So it's a slightly more personal approach. Um, and so you know, my involvement with migration and mobilities goes back a very long way. Um, my PhD in Liverpool in the early 1970s was entitled Migration, Mobility and Residential Change in 19th Century Liverpool. Um, so yeah, mobility was there right from the start, though I had no real conception of mobilities research as it is seen today. I was appointed to Lancaster in 1975 to a lectureship in geography. Um, and so obviously I continued to work with on mobilities and migration themes along with other things. And when Seymour was formed uh, 20 years ago, it's fairly obvious that I ought to be involved because I thought I did migration, I thought I did mobilities. Uh, I also already knew John very well. Uh, because you know, we, we obviously met a whole range of university things, but particularly when John was Dean of the Faculty of Social Science, I was Associate Dean for Research, so worked very closely with him. Um, and as well as talking about faculty things, it was actually much more interesting just to talk about research things, which we did you know, a lot of the time. Um, so to see more was something which you know, I felt very much um, was part of my life from the time that it started. There are two ways, I think, in which Seymour in particular has influenced what I've done uh, and certainly influenced it for the better. But the first, fairly obviously, from a point of view of somebody who you know, was trained in the late 60s, early 70s in geography, which at that point was strongly quantitative in its approach, uh, pretty much devoid of theory, you know, Seymour sort of forced me to engage with social theory in a way in which I had not done before. And to think, therefore, about the processes of migration, mobility in, in rather different ways, rather than just being content to, to measure it and describe what was going on, where people were going and the impacts of that, to think much more deeply about the meanings uh, associated with you know, mobility you know, and, and to contextualise it in that way. So the, the theoretical input was certainly one of the, the key themes that, that I would take from the, my engagement with Seymour. Uh, but the other, and the one I would say a little bit more about, is the uh, desire to, in a sense, historicize mobilities research. Because one of the things I came to, to realize fairly quickly was that a, a lot of the mobilities research that was going on uh, was obviously very contemporary based, or looking indeed into the future, but that to the degree that there was any historical perspective, it was not um, particularly well contextualized it was not very deep. It didn't really think very hard about the way in which the past related to you know, present day mobilities. Uh, so what I wanted to do was to uh, really two things. First of all, to basically find out more about past mobilities in the context of you know, mobilities theories, and to think about the way in which they connect together 
And to ask the question, I suppose, to what degree can contemporary mobility work relate to the past? Because there was always this kind of hidden assumption, which is in a sense not really true, but the phrase, the new mobilities paradigm, that suggested that it was new in the sense it was a break with the past, rather than being a new paradigm, which I think is the way in which I would have, you know, should interpret it, but it was not always interpreted in that way. So I wanted to demonstrate, I suppose, that you know, it wasn't really a break with the past, that mobility theory is just as relevant to you know, historical mobilities as it is to the present. Um, so that's one of the things that I've been doing a lot of work with, and as the introduction said, uh, working most recently, particularly with, with personal diaries, um, trying to reconstruct all of those everyday mobilities that are not recorded in any other documents. You know, whereas we can get information on you know, international migration and to some degree on internal migration, you know, for a whole range of things and contemporary mobilities, we can talk to people, we can do accompanied journeys. In the past, we don't have that information, but personal diaries do at least give you some clues um, uh, so that's what I've been trying to do. And in doing that, to demonstrate that all of the diverse and complicated ways in which people travel and the diverse and complicated meanings that are associated with travel today appear to be just as relevant to people in the past, uh, that people traveled very frequently in the past, they traveled for much the same sorts of reasons. Okay, it took a bit longer, you know, transport was slower, though with train strikes and other problems, maybe not that much <laughs> slower in some cases. And actually, the speed at which you could get from you know, Manchester to London in the early 20th century was probably not that much different from, from today. Um, so I would argue that the way in which mobility's research should be thought about should be not as something which is just concerned with the present, or concerned with the future, it should be equally concerned with the past. And linked to that, and the other theme which I think came out from that very strongly, was the importance of linking together the themes of migration, mobility, and transport. Because one of the things that is often um, the case, I think, is that they're seen as very distinct and separate fields of academic inquiry. You have migration history, you have mobility histories, you have transport history. But actually, you can't migrate without transport. You can't have any form of mobility without transport. They're all interacted together. <coughs> so thinking about the way in which they are contextualized and related to one another is something else which I think came out very strongly, particularly from the historical research. And I would argue, along with others, that that has contemporary resonances in that if we are going to tackle some of the you know, burning issues around you know, climate change and climate breakdown and mobility problems that have been described, particularly by David and others and by, by Monica at the beginning, uh, then we need actually to think about how people traveled in the past a lot more because by present day standards, it was much more sustainable. The majority of past travel was not resource intensive. So therefore, you know, the idea that you can actually walk for most everyday journeys, if you live in a city, in a relatively compact city, that you can cycle, that you can use public transport. And remember that the, the train network in 1890 you know, was massively greater than it is today. You could travel to almost anywhere in Britain uh, and be within you know, a, a few miles of a railway station, uh, apart from in the extreme Scottish Highlands or part of the North Pennines. So, Thinking about past mobilities in the context of current climate emergency is again something which I would argue is important. So those are my thoughts. That's how mobility theory and the mobility centers has influenced me. And I would again echo what everybody else has said. Right from the start, you know, Seymour has been welcoming, it's been innovative, it's been interdisciplinary, it's been a creative, um, uh, it's been an environment which I felt I could contribute, but from which I felt I learned an enormous amount. Uh, I'm very grateful to all the people I've worked with uh, because you know, I have, it has changed the way I think, I'm sure for the better. So thank you.
Thank you so much for sharing that. It's, it's very clear that uh, being part of, you know, mobility studies has really shaped your practice over the last 10 to 20 years. I'm, I'm quite sure what we're alluding to there, but you know, fantastic work.